Hello everybody, welcome to the video and thank you for clicking. As always, there will be some timestamps in the description if you wanna jump ahead. This video is all about the tips and tricks I've learned using my Coleman 425B every day, multiple times a day for quite some time now. I'm actually on a road trip and this thing is super handy, super portable, and most importantly, it's really rugged, so it's hard to break. So let's get right into it. You're gonna lay the stove down like this. You're gonna pop these legs up like so. And you'll see once we get inside that everything needed to cook is stored right inside this grill. Super uh, efficient design. You'll pop the grill out like that. You'll pop out this fuel tank and then you will hang the fuel tank right on the front of the stove, making sure that this fuel line goes right into this main burner. So once you've got your fuel tank hooked on the front, you can put your grill back in, and then if necessary, you can slide these guys up and use ah, use these things here to block the wind. If you are cooking on a day where there's wind coming from every direction, you're kind of screwed. Obviously, if the wind was coming from this direction, I would spin the grill around. This gives you three sides of wind protection. Um, it's a really slick design. So now that you've got your fuel tank on the front, you're ready to add some fuel you'll unscrew this cap and start pouring fuel in here. One thing to remember here is you really can't fill this red fuel tank with fuel. What's gonna happen is you're gonna unscrew this and build pressure in the tank by hand pumping like this. Um, if you were to fill this right to the top, you leave no space in the tank for compression. So best practice is to fill it to about 60 or 70%. If you fill to the top, you're gonna pump it five times, it's gonna feel pressurized, you'll start cooking and then within one or two minutes you'll have to pump some more. So you'll be cooking and pumping and cooking and pumping and it's really just a mistake. <clears throat> so best practice is fill to 60 or 70 percent. Once you've got your fuel in there make sure the cap is tight and you'll start pumping. You'll see here um, you can't pull this out unless you unscrew it to the left and then you can pump. There is a little hole on the end of this plunger and uh, you'll just cover the hole with your thumb and begin to pump. Depending on how much fuel is in the tank, that will dictate how much plunging you have to do. The, the lower the fuel level, the more pumping you'll have because there's more air in the tank for you to compress. Once you feel like there's some good pressure in here, the way you'll know is uh, it'll feel resistance when you're pumping. Once you feel like you're ready, you're ready to light the stove. So here's your throttle knob. You'll screw to the left. I usually do a turn and a half to light. And there is this little choke knob here that goes up to light. So the throttle is open and the choke is up. You're ready to light. Now, you'll see when it's lit with a choke up, you have these kind of yellow campfire type flames. That's because there's more air in the mixture just for lighting purposes. Once the choke goes down, you'll see these flames all go blue and it turns to a gas stove. It says right here, uh, after one minute, turn the choke down. You can certainly turn the choke down sooner than one minute. This is probably worst case scenario if you're in high altitude, if it's super windy or it's super cold or all three. Um, on a day like this, on a beautiful day with no wind, I mean 20 seconds or 15 seconds of choke is more than enough. So we'll turn this down and now you can even hear it, it's burning like a gas stove. Blue flames all around, you're ready to cook now. So there is a second burner and the little knob on the outside over here is how you adjust that. One thing to remember with that second burner is it's made out of metal this knob and it's about three inches from the burner. So it's gonna get hot and it's gonna be hard to turn once you start cooking. Best practice is to adjust it to the spot you want before you light the burner. Once it's hot, you're gonna be licking your fingers and trying to do it, it's a bit of a pain. Um, once you've got your second burner going, another thing to remember is this second burner will not burn as hot as your main burner. So if you've got two dishes here, maybe you're cooking food and boiling water for coffee or something, um, put the water on the main burner. It takes a lot more heat and it'll burn a lot better on this main burner. Once you've done that, you're ready to cook, you're ready to eat. When you're finished, you'll just turn the throttle back to the right and, um, and it'll shut off by itself. Now, when I store mine, I actually store it in my pickup truck 
kind of right beneath where I sleep every night on this road trip. So I actually drain the pressure out of the tank every use. So I turn this back to the left and, and drain the pressure. Um, let's imagine a situation where I was cooking breakfast on this picnic table, going for a hike and coming back to cook breakfast, uh, cook dinner on this same picnic table, I would leave pressure in the tank. Um, I'm using this plunger a lot more than necessary, but I just think for safety reasons I have to do it that way. So for storage, I would leave pressure in the tank if you're going to use it again and again and you're not storing it in an enclosed space somewhere where it might be a disaster. Um, other than that, it's a really great stove. I'm sure you guys will love it. Other than that, I think you guys are ready to cook now. So thank you for watching my video as I shrink into the corner. Um, you can click below me for some of my most recent travel videos, see what state or province or country I'm in now. You can click to your left for some of my other work, probably some other Coleman stove videos to be fair. Thank you for watching and enjoy your camping guys, bye.